beyond the Beatitudes and, and with a hiatus throughout the summer of different things happening, it's hard to have any continuity in this. And we're in the last chapter of the three chapters of Christ's Sermon on the Mount. And tonight we're just going to cover one verse. And one of the reasons is it doesn't seem to fit, and we're going to have to find out how it fits. If you'll just briefly look, those of you that have Bibles, you can see in verse 1, it begins with, Judge not, lest you be judged. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. With what measure you meet, shall be measured to you again. And then he talks about the moat being in your brother's eye. You see that, and you don't see the beam in your own eye. And how are you going to say to your brother, let me take out the, the moat that is in your eye, and you've got a beam sticking out of yours. And then Jesus says this, Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine, pigs, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Notice the first two words Christ says in this verse. He says, give not. I want to teach for this passage tonight this theme when it's good not to give. That seems out of whack, doesn't it? When it's good not to give. Heavenly Father, may the words of Christ be as true to our heart by the power of the Holy Spirit as when he spake them on this planet 2,000 years ago. Lord, you know every heart in the place. You know what every heart of any who will be listening tonight or will listen later. I pray that your word would be a living thing, alive in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. And you can be seated. Amen. Well, it's sure good just to be able to teach with you again tonight. Let me, let, me, let me share this. And, you know, sometimes you can be too transparent, but I think all of you are going to be able to relate to this if you've served God any amount of time whatsoever. But if you talk to those that are involved in ministry in any capacity, pastor, singing, Sunday school teacher, those that are working in the back tonight, those that drive the bus, any type altar work. If you talk to those who have been involved in ministry for any length of time, they'll tell you this. The people you help the most will turn and hurt you the most. The people you invest the most in most often become the people who will turn against you, say hateful things, hurtful things, break your heart. I think we could, and I'm not going to, but we could take lots of examples of that. I can think of those, whether it's the youth department, whether it's the children's ministry, whether it's just individuals reaching out to people in the church. You're right there tonight. The discouragement, because you've really made an effort to help some folks, to share with them, and it's just like it means nothing to them. In fact, it's more than meaning nothing to them. They turn on you. Now, before we get into this, having introduced it with that illustration, let me tell you this. If we'll go back to the verse, give not that which is holy unto dogs. This is a part of God's word we probably would never cover, never hear preached if we didn't do Bible study. You know, some people, they don't like Bible study. I mean, can you imagine that folks would like to study the Bible? I mean, they, they don't get it. But one of the big benefits of Bible study is you look at scriptures you'll never hear preached on, or almost never. And this is one of them tonight because it, it seems, it, and I, I pointed that out as we read it, it seems a little odd. Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Let, let me revisit the context because we have to ask ourselves the question, how in the world does this fit with what Jesus has been saying? Judge not. And, and, and then he said, you know, you're looking at the sawdust in your brother's eye, and you got a beam sticking out your own eye. How does all this fit? And I'm not going to reteach that, but never make the mistake that Jesus wasn't saying that we should notice the sawdust He's in our brother's eye. He just says, don't be a hypocrite and point out the sawdust in your brother's eye because you got a beam in your own. And then he said, cast out the beam that's in your own eye so you can see clearly to cast out the sawdust, the moat, out of your brother's eye. Jesus never said we should notice the sawdust in our brother's eye. He never said we should help try to get the sawdust out of our brother's eye. He just said make sure you're right yourself 
before you help your brother with the sawdust. So how does this, how does he go from that to giving off that which is holy unto dogs? How does that fit? It's very simple. Some people don't want the sawdust out of their eye. You see it. You want to help them with it. You see the pain, the trouble it's causing them, the difficulty, and you're there with the love of God, the grace of God, the word of God to help them get the sawdust out of their eye. But they don't want the sawdust out of their eye. That's how it fits. You know, I don't know if you've ever noticed this. Have you ever seen somebody in a sour mood? I mean, besides the fellow in the mirror. Have you ever seen somebody in a very, really bad mood? Usually it's kids. And here they're getting ready to go to church, and they got a big old wad of lint right there on their shoulder. So you try to help them with it. You say, oh, you got lint on your shoulder. Let me help you with that. But there's such a bad mood that, ah, I don't want help. I like it there. Have you ever seen him do something like that? I mean, just be silly and something that's bad or unsightly because of their attitude, they don't want to help with it. This is what Jesus is addressing. addressing. Now, I, again, it seems odd because in this very sermon, Jesus has already preached that we should be givers. Let me remind you from Matthew 5.42. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Jesus said we need to be givers, abundant givers. And, 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 and Christians by nature are givers. And if you, you by nature aren't a giver, I would question your relationship with the Lord. Christians are givers. We're commanded by Christ earlier in the sermon to give. But now Jesus says there are some to whom we should not give. He's very emphatic. Give not that which is holy unto dogs. Now, please let me do this parenthetical thing since it's Bible study. This is a good time to point out. Uh, I didn't know I left that in there, but that, that's good. <laughs> that, I'm supposed to take that, have taken that out before I gave the outline. But it's a good time to look at a literary technique of the Bible times that the Bible writers love. So let's go back to the verse. If you know anything about poetry, you, you uh, describe lines that are parallel, like you'll go A-A or B-B or A-B-A-B. Some of you will be familiar with that. But let's look at this. This is something the Bible writers love to do. They like to cross the parallelism. Instead of saying A-B-A-B, they love to go A-B-B-A. Let's look at that. A, give not that which is holy unto dogs. B, neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Not A, but B, lest they trample them under the feet. The pigs trample the pearls, not the dogs, and turn again and rend you. The dogs rend and tear at you, not the pigs. So let's look at the verse. And they, there's several verses where the writers very specifically did this. It was just an interesting way they loved to do things. Here it is. Give not that which is holy unto dogs. Now go to the last part of the verse. Lest they turn again and rend you. The dogs do the tearing. The dogs do the rending. Now let's go to the second line. The B. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine, lest they, the swine, trample them under their feet. It, 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 it's just a literary device of the time, but it says a whole lot. And the reason I went into that is because we got to be clear on who's doing the trampling and who's doing the biting and the rending and the tearing and the snarling. It's the dogs that are biting and rending, and it's the pigs and the swine that are trampling under their feet. Amen. And this truth of Christ is true to reality. Give not that which is holy unto dogs. There are some folks with, you can have all the right motives. You can have love in your heart. You can do it graciously. And you can share the gospel, the good news to somebody that desperately needs to hear it. And they will snap at you and snarl at you and dislike you for it. There can even be so-called professed believers 
They're messing their life up. They're getting involved in false doctrine. They're making wrong decisions. And you go to them with all the love of Christ in your heart. And you attempt to give them advice. You attempt to counsel them because you care for them. But they will smirk at you, shirk you, act like you are doing something wrong. You try to warn somebody of somebody. And they'll rend at you. Jesus says this is the reality of people you try to help. But they don't want your help. To those folks, Jesus said, that's it. Cut it off. It's done. Don't give to them any longer. That's The scary thing is to be on the other side of that. The scary thing is to be one of those that Jesus says, that's it. Don't try to give to them any longer. I never realized, and I knew what I'd be speaking on this Wednesday in the message And I knew what was in there, but it never clicked to me Sunday night when I was preaching. Remember, I said your your nature determines what you're after, or what you're after determines your nature. I never realized that there was a parallel with what is shared tonight. But listen listen to what Jesus is saying. He's saying a person's nature, a person's nature determines how they respond to truth. If you have the nature of a dog, you respond to truth like a dog. You snap, you rend. If you have the nature of a pig, you respond to truth like a pig. You don't value what you ought to value. So let's kind of take this apart and see what the Lord is saying. To summarize, both the dog and the pig lack appreciation for what was given to them Because it was not their nature to appreciate it. It's also interesting that both of these animals, dogs and pigs, all through the Bible, the Jewish religion, and they're always considered unclean animals. There's a big connection between having the wrong attitude towards truth and being unclean. Being unclean. So let's look at what Jesus is saying. He said, don't give that which is holy unto dogs. And there's been a lot of discussion of this, but almost certainly, I believe, that which is holy, what would you be giving a dog to eat? What would you be giving him? You would meat. And that which is holy was meat that had been sacrificed to God. Now, here's the interesting thing. The reason a dog doesn't appreciate that holy meat, because his nature... He's got the wrong attitude. I was just stumbling here. Some of you remember at some point in your life trying to help maybe a stray dog or something, and you were actually trying to, it was starving. You was trying to give it meat, and you reached out to give it some food, and it snapped at you. It couldn't appreciate the meat because it had the wrong attitude. The interesting thing is dogs like meat, right? Dogs may need meat, but he has the wrong attitude. He snaps, he's vicious, he's ugly, he's mean. And there are people like that because of their nature. You share the good news, you share the truth, and they'll keep on snapping, being vicious towards you. You know, here's the thing, some folks, and I said being on the other end is a scary thing. If you're vicious with folks who share the truth with you, you know, maybe it's in Sunday school class and you don't like what's shared and you don't agree and you're all upset. There'll come a time when God will say, that's enough. Don't share the truth with them anymore. But notice the dog could not appreciate what was given because he had the wrong attitude. It's a little bit different with the pig. A pig didn't appreciate the pearls because of its appetite. You know, it's not just your attitude that determines how you respond to truth. It's your appetite. Amen. You know, as long as that, can you imagine, I can't think like a pig, but can you imagine when, taking a bucket full of pearls and putting them in before the pig? At first, he's excited. They look like peas. And he gets excited and, ah, gets a mouthful and says, ah, these are no good. I don't like these. And he's disappointed because he thought the peas were pearls. You know, we would be, on the other hand, we would be really excited if we thought someone put a dollop of peas on our plate and discovered they were pearls, wouldn't that excite you? For the resale value, of course. It's the nature. The pig's nature cannot appreciate 
the pearls. And therefore, he spits them out and he tramples them in the muck that he lives in. You know, really, just really succinctly said, the pig didn't value the pearls. Think about it. The slop meant more to the pigs than the pearls did. I know, folks, I've seen it come into their hearts when they begin to turn from God, backslide from God, go out into the world. Suddenly the slop of the world means more than the pearls of the word. Why? Because there's been a change of nature and their appetite for things have changed. Isn't it interesting that this verse is in the context of those verses that our world around us love to twist and misinterpret? They love to take that judge not lest you be judged. We've already explained it. We're not going to re-explain it. It's not talking about not judging. It's talking about not being a hypocrite when you judge. But they love to quote that. Well, you're not supposed to judge. You're not supposed to judge. Yet, to obey this scripture, if we could go back to it, give not that. To obey this scripture, you have to judge. You have to make a judgment. That person's acting like a dog. They're, they're being vicious. They don't want to. That person's acting like a, a pig to the pearl. He doesn't want the gospel. He has no appetite for it. Jesus said we should make this judgment. Jesus says just really clearly, he said we're not to share the truth with people who treat it with contempt. Now, I know there's times when people put on a front you try to share the gospel with them and they'll turn away and they'll act mad at everything and that's a little different thing because you can feel the spirit in you compelling you to witness and you can feel the spirit working on them and you know you know sometimes unsaved people get meaner when they get convicted we understand all of that and Jesus understood all that but he said, if you're trying to share the gospel with somebody, it may be somebody at work, it may be a fellow student, it may be your teacher, amen, and you're trying to share the gospel, and you feel this animosity that's snapping towards you, Jesus said, just don't give it to them. Don't share it with them. We are to share the gospel. We're compelled to share the gospel. But there's some, Jesus said, it's enough. All they're going to do is snarl at you. All they're going to do is trample them under their feet. And you know, there's something to be advised on here. Jesus never shared the gospel with somebody who didn't want to hear it. Read your gospels. He never shared the gospel with somebody who didn't want to hear it. I remember one time it was shared with me about a young man. He said, Well, I, I just I just don't I just don't like worship. They're at Union Road because the preaching's so boring. Well, that was one of the flattering things said that just really boosts you, you know, before you go out to the pulpit. And I, I agree, I don't like boring preaching, especially if I'm the one doing it. But you know why, you know, just to be truthful, you know why he found it boring? Really, really. Because something had changed in his nature. He could profess to be a great Christian, but he was trampling truth under his feet. He was snarling at the one who tried to help him. How could those that so easily been taught all they've been taught from God's Word, how could they leave the people of God, say disparaging words against the people that loved them and cared for them and showed them grace and mercy and love and say things against the leadership of the church because there's been a change in their nature. There's, there's the dog nature that's unkind to those that's given them meat. There's the pig nature that's unaware of the great value of the things they've been taught and shared and, and the things that they've heard. You say, well, how does this all apply to everyday life? Well, first of all, in something I've already mentioned as an illustration, in witnessing. Unless we are specifically led by the Spirit, we are not to share the gospel with those who have made a point of their attitude that they do not want to hear it. Don't corner them in the break room and say, you're going to listen to me. If they're snarling, back off, leave it. Jesus says, don't bother. So it's in witnessing. We are to witness. We need to witness more. We need to share the gospel more. 
But we need to realize, you know, some folks, and, and, and it seems a great burden at first, but they want to share the gospel to everybody they see. That would be a noble thing in many respects. The better way is to each day approach it. Holy Spirit, show me whom you're moving on that you want me to share the gospel with today. Because there's some folks that fall in this category. They don't have the right nature. Secondly, this fits or this applies to trying to warn and help somebody that's backsliding. I believe we ought to do this. We ought to care about folks. Their, their fervor's growing cold. They're losing their passion. They're backing up. They're moving into the things of the world. It's wonderful for someone that's invested in their life, invested love and grace and mercy to go to them and warn them. But if you've warned them and tried to help them and they've snapped at you and everybody around them and they've just said these ugly words, Jesus said there's a time, it's enough. No need to say anything else to them. Same with trying to encourage somebody, to help somebody. You've got good counsel to give them. You have good advice to give them. You want to help them. But they disdain you. They reject what you're saying. Jesus said there comes a time. It's enough. Don't share it. Same with discuss, discussing things. It's great to discuss theology. It's great to discuss the end time prophecy and how it's all going to work. It's great to discuss politics sometimes. But if it's a person you begin to discuss with and they begin snarling, and we're there, aren't we? They begin snapping and biting, and or anything you say is given no consideration. There's a time you cut that off. You don't share that. That's what Jesus said. I'm just about done, but I said something at the beginning I want to note before we get through here. That's Jesus' instruction to us. But the scary thing is to be on the other side of the instruction. Now, I, I know we have a theological, we could have a theological discussion here, but I really believe just like a sinful heart can be turned into a godly heart, a sinful heart can be turned into a saved heart. I also believe Scripture teaches a sinful heart or a saved heart can be turned into a sinful heart and a godly heart can be turned into an ungodly heart. James talks about if your brother errs, try to deal with him. Amen. Because that happens. And the scary thing is to find our heart turning into the kind of, and I know these aren't flattering analogies. They were, they were so poignant when Jesus used them, and we still find them repulsive. But it's a, it's a bad thing when you find your heart turning into a dog's heart. When someone's trying to help you and God's word's being preached and something rises up in you that just has a snarling attitude. I don't like that. It's a resisting attitude. It's awful to find your heart getting that way. It's awful to get your heart, feel like your heart's turned into a pig's heart that has, has no appreciation, no, no value to the pearls of truth that are shared. And so I asked myself the question, have I begun to feel aggravated at those who would share the truth to me? Have I lost interest in spiritual things? Have I lost interest in the Bible? Have I lost interest in, interest in preaching? Now, I wonder... Peter heard this message of Jesus. He heard this instruction. Give not that which is holy unto dogs, neither cast ye your pearl before swine. Do you think that Peter could not have written what I'm about to read you in his epistle without thinking of this? Look what he wrote in his epistle, his second epistle, 2 Peter 2.22. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in mire. Again, they went back to it. There's nothing in that passage to indicate that these were people who had not truly been saved. There's much in the con context to indicate that these were people whose hearts were right, but they allowed their hearts to go back to their former nature of a dog and a sow. A dog found vomit more entice aren't you glad this isn't Sunday morning before church? A dog found vomit more enticing than the meat of the word, and the pig found the mud more enticing than the pure white pearls. In both instances, here's a wonderful thing. They could call on God to change their heart back. Aren't you glad God can change your heart? Amen. Would you come, music? How many knows that we live in a world of snarling dogs and wallowing pigs? 
It's there. People love the muck. They love the sin. They love. They love the ugliness. People snarl at truth. A world that preaches tolerance and love. You speak the truth and see if there's not a barking and a snarling that follows just like that. Am I telling you the truth? Amen. But I got to thinking about that. In a world of dogs and pigs, I want to remain a sheep. A sheep that can be led. A sheep that can be fed. Because I know what he has for a sheep. Green pastures and still waters. Amen. Praise the Lord. Back when they were still making effort to map Africa and make inroads in some of the back parts of Africa, one of those men went to southern Africa. And some of, some of civilization had preceded him. And those kids in that remote village, they had learned how to play marbles. But he noticed the marbles looked unique. And it happened to be an area where today they mine diamonds. And those kids in that remote village, they gathered together, just little kids. And they were playing marbles with diamonds, not realizing the value of those diamonds, playing marbles with them. Amen. Amen. This truth God has given us, it's priceless. Amen. It's not something to take for granted. It's not something to devalue. It's something to hold in high esteem. And my prayer is, God, give me the nature that forever holds your truth and your word in esteem. That's the nature I want. And if I'll have that nature, guess what? He'll keep giving to me and giving to me. Could you stand? Praise the Lord. Father, thank you for your word. In the name of Jesus, Lord, make it a living thing in our hearts to take with us from this Bible study to make it a part of our living. God, may we ever, ever desire the nature of a leadable, teachable, guidable sheep. In Jesus' name, amen. Could you come and find a place to pray?
can hear. 